Hey guys, this is Mr. Saints Godzilla 21, and before we start the video, I wanted to let you guys know I'm going to take a break from making any Saints Row related top 5s. Now, I know that might sound crazy, but to be honest, there's only so many top 5s you can make about Saints Row. So today's final Saints Row video is going to be special. Not only are we counting down your guys' most requested top 5, it's going to be twice the list. Today is the top 10 emotional moments in Saints Row. Today's video is suggested by... Near the end of Saints Row III, the boss is given a compromising decision. They either must let Kilbane escape the city in a private jet or allow the Saints Lieutenant Shandy to die in an island explosion. For any fan of the series from at least the second game, there's no way you can let Shandy go. As you start your way to save her, you must fight through waves of Stag and Luchador gang members, all while listening to the music I Need a Hero. You finally fight your way to the island and to the top of the Magarat statue, where you're confronted by the Stag's second in command, Kia. Similar to the mission where you save Shandi in Saints Row 2, you must throw flashbangs at Kia while she holds Shandi hostage. During this little battle, Kia reminds you of all the past Saints you got killed, only enraging you more. At last you kill her and save Shandi and everyone else on the island. Saints Row 4's ending is filled with mixed emotions. The boss is at last going to get revenge against the alien emperor Zinyak from imprisoning them into a simulation and destroying the earth. While making your way to the final boss, you're given power armor and the music the touch begins to play. Anyone familiar with the cartoon Transformers is probably feeling nostalgic at this point. The boss breaks his way into Zinyak's throne room, and after a few exchange words, the final battle commences, ending with you ripping Zinyak's head off. The final cutscene ends with the boss and the other saints dancing in the on track from Saints Row 2. Before it got out of hell, everyone thought this was it, the conclusion to the Saints Row franchise. No other time did you consider everything you've done in Saints Row. Even for the hardcore old school fans, this moment is still very emotional. At the end of Saints Row 2, the Saints have once again taken over Stillwater. Your final obstacle is to stop Dane Vogel and the Ultor Misako team. After saving your lieutenants, destroying the secret Ultor testing site, and killing all the board members of Ultor, you're at last face to face with Dane Vogel at the top of the Ultor Tower. Each time I see this, my emotions get mixed up. I want to sit there and reflect on everything I did to get there, but at the same time I want to laugh at this Number scene. Number one fan running Ultor! Either way you watch it, it's quite amazing. For any old school fan, this is probably the hardest decision you can make. Letting Viola, Burt Reynolds, and Shawnee die in order to stop Kilbane is quite painful. After you stop his plane from escaping Steelport, Kilbane gives you a short speech that will burn into your skull. After a quick time event, you snap his neck and ponder if he made the right decision. When players discover there is a secret mission in Saints Row 2, it was pretty mind-blowing. You find Dex's phone number in the police station with directions to meet him at the old church. When you get there, you're greeted by Julius instead. Yes, the original 3rd Street Saints leader who tried to kill you in Saints Row 1. Your little meeting is interrupted by the Misako team, and after a wild car chase, you find yourself with Julius at the Museum District. After one last confrontation, you shoot him in the head. The boss walks away, and you're only left with memories from Saints Row 1. Just like old times, player. Saints Row 1's ending is quite shocking for players the first time they played it. After assassinating the competition for Richard Hughes, he invites you to his yacht to be thanked for making him mayor. When you reach the mission icon, you're asked to save the game. This is your first sign that something's up. For the mission itself, it's only a cutscene. The boss meets Hughes on the yacht, and you see Julius watching from afar. When you find out Hughes is going to kill you, BOOM! Yacht explodes, everyone is dead, credits roll. Wow. This just might be the most satisfying moment in Saints Row history. After the death of a certain lieutenant thanks to the Brotherhood, the boss takes it upon himself to abduct Mero's girlfriend and have him unknowingly kill her during a monster truck rally. Boy, this whole scene is great. I can't think of any other game that pulls off revenge this well. Oh! Lynn was the first female character you meet in Saints Row. She played an important role of infiltrating the Westside Rollers and getting close to Sharp. Sadly, her cover's blown and you both get shot in the trunk after an attempt to save her. The emotions you feel in this scene are best shown on Donnie's face. A wave of betrayal and loss consume him as he flees the scene, leaving only Sharp to drop you off an edge. The boss is the only one who escapes while Lynn drowns in the murky depths below. If not only the best cutscene in Saints Row, it's quite close to being the most emotionally scarring. After the Ronin discover Johnny's hideout, Shogo sends Junichi to find the lost casino money. Junichi uses Aisha as bait while the boss and Gat return to the home. With her last breath, Aisha sacrifices her life to warn Johnny. All you see is the tip of roses hitting the floor before an epic battle takes place. At number one, we have the death of Carlos. After the boss scars Mero's face, Jessica returns a favor by capturing Carlos and dragging him behind a truck by a chain. Chasing after the truck and watching Carlos get scraped to death is nearly traumatizing. After stopping the truck, it's when you realize there's no saving Carlos. The boss puts a gun up to his head, and Mercy kills him. Even after seeing this 30 times or so, it never gets easier to watch. 
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a top 5, please leave a comment below. And before we go, I have a very important message for anyone who eats at fast food restaurants. Do not, I repeat, do not buy, eat, or sample the new Burger King Wicked Halloween Burger. This isn't just some black dyed marketing scheme. This thing is actually an evil force. I tried it two days ago and I don't think I'll ever recover. This damn thing put me through more pain than when I had food poisoning. You can't even throw up from it. Instead you just shard out the greenest poison waste you've ever seen. This stuff could turn you into the damn Toxic Avenger. I swear to God, don't let anyone you know try this crap. Boycott Burger King until this entity is gone for good. But also, don't mistake this for the Squid Burger from Japan. Those won't anal rape your insides and leave you in a puddle of Hulk turds. I know this is a weird warning, especially in a video like this, but do yourself a favor and stay away.